वेलकम बैक टू एजी कार्डियो वाइज आई एम डॉक्टर अमेय अमोणकर इन पार्ट वन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट वेन कोलेस्ट्रॉल मेडिकेशन आर ट्रूली नीडेड एंड वाई योर रिस्क मैटर्स मोर देन योर एल डी एल नंबर्स इन दिस वीडियो वी गो अ स्टेप फर्दर इन टू द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द मेडिकेशन दैम सेल्स वॉट एग्जैक्टली डू स्टेटिंग डू इन योर बॉडी वॉट इफ यू कान टॉलरेट दैम वॉट आर योर अदर ऑप्शन एंड द साइड इफेक्ट्स यू हर्ड अबाउट आर दे एक्चुअली रियल Let's walk through the science, the solutions, and the truth behind the fear. Cholesterol medications are designed to lower LDL, that is bad cholesterol, boost HDL, that is good cholesterol, or reduce triglycerides. Now, here's a quick overview. The first is statins, the most commonly prescribed drugs. They block the liver's production of cholesterol and help remove LDL from the bloodstream. Now, imagine your liver is a cholesterol factory. statins switch off the main machine inside this factory when production drops the liver gets desperate and starts pulling cholesterol from the blood instead cleaning it up like a vacuum cleaner most commonly prescribed ones like atorvastatin and rosuvastatin reduce ldl by 30 to 55% depending on their doses they marginally increase hdl by around 5 to 10% and reduce triglycerides by 15 to 30% not just that they lower hscrp which is an inflammatory marker So they don't just lower LDL; they make your plaque stable, reduce inflammation, and prevent heart attacks. Hence, they are the first prescribed drugs of all the cholesterol-lowering medications. Next is ezetimibe. Now, ezetimibe blocks a transporter protein in the intestine that's responsible for absorbing dietary cholesterol and biliary cholesterol. It typically reduces LDL cholesterol in the bloodstream by around 15 to 20 percent. Now it is rarely prescribed alone and often added to statins when LDL is not at goal despite the highest dose of statins or the statin dose is limited by side effects. Next are the PCSK9 inhibitors. These include the newer drugs like Evolocumab available in India as Repata and Alirocumab. Now these are monoclonal antibodies that bind to a protein called the PCSK9 and prevent it from degrading the LDL receptors. This results in more LDL receptors on the liver cells, which pull more LDL out of the bloodstream, leading to a 50 to 60 percent LDL reduction on the top of statins. Now, let me simplify this. Think of your liver like a vacuum cleaner for cholesterol. The more suction ports, that is, the LDL receptors it has, the more cholesterol it can clean up. But there's a sneaky protein, the PCSK9. that blocks and destroys these suction ports the pcsk9 inhibitors are like a bodyguard that prevents this sabotage keeping your cholesterol cleaning system working at full strength so these are very expensive medications given as subcutaneous injections once in every 2 to 4 weeks they are not for routine use if statins are the everyday warrior pcsk9 inhibitors are your elite special forces they are especially useful in high risk patients those with recurrent heart attacks multiple angioplasties aggressive disease etc where statins or ezetimibe is not enough to achieve the lowering needed next is bempedoic acid another relatively newer drug now think of bempedoic acid like a pre blocker in the liver's cholesterol factory now while statins turn off the factory's main machine bempedoic acid cuts off the raw materials before they even get there now here's the best part it only works inside the liver and not in your muscles So it's a great option if statins give you muscle aches. Next is fibrates. Fibrates don't block cholesterol production like statins. They boost your body's ability to clear fat particles from the blood, especially triglycerides. They are primarily used in patients with very high triglycerides or diabetics with high triglycerides and low HDL, often as a combination with a statin, but never for reducing LDL alone. And the last is incliseran. This is a small interfering RNA therapy. it is like a mute button for the cholesterol sabotaging protein pcsk9 so while pcsk9 inhibitors like uh, repata block the protein once it's made incliseran stops the blueprint so the liver never makes the protein in the first place incliseran is one of the most exciting tools we have today it's not a daily pill it's a twice a year expensive subcutaneous injection that silences the pcsk9 gene in your liver that means long lasting cholesterol control with fewer doses for patients with stubborn cholesterol this is a game changer despite all the exciting options statins continue to be the cornerstone of ldl lowering therapy why because they are the most extensively studied most affordable and most effective at reducing cardiovascular risk 
in a broad range of patients. There's more than one reason why statins are legions. They don't just lower LDL, they make your plaque stable, reduce inflammation and prevent heart attacks. Every guideline from the ACC to ESE to the Indian guidelines, they all put statins first. Now let's address the elephant in the room, side effects. While most people tolerate cholesterol medications well, some may experience side effects. The first is muscle aches. While 5 to 10% do report them, real statin related muscle aches are found only in 1 to 2% patients. They are proximal as in uh, discomfort while raising your arms or getting up from the sitting or squatting position. Now most muscle symptoms are mild, reversible and can be easily managed by switching statins like say atorvastatin to rosuvastatin or lowering doses or reducing to an alternate day dosing or adding azetimibe or bempedog acid. Now if one brand of shoe hurts, you don't stop walking, right? You just switch brands. Statins are no different. Not every ache or mood swing is due to your meds. Talk to your doctor before hitting the panic button. Next is elevation in liver enzymes. It is rare, that is less than 1%, often transient and rarely results in stopping of medications. See, statins don't damage the liver. In most cases, they just nudge liver enzymes slightly, which we can monitor. In fact, they have been shown to protect the liver in fatty liver disease. Next is your injection site reactions for PCSK9 inhibitors like Repata. Minor swelling or redness can occur at the site where the shot is given. And finally, your serious adverse effects like rhabdomyolysis, where muscle damage can increase the risk of kidney shutdown. Now, this is very rare, that is less than 1 in 1000 and often seen in patients receiving very high doses in combination with other drugs. See, statins are heavily mythologized thanks to internet misinformation, half-read headlines and anecdotal horror stories. So let's clear the myths. Myth number one, statins cause memory loss or dementia. Reality, large studies like Prosper and Ebbinghaus found no consistent link between statins and cognitive decline. Statins may even protect brain function by improving blood vessel health. So statins don't steal your memory, they might actually help preserve it, especially by reducing the risk of stroke and vascular dementia. Now, myth number two, statins cause diabetes in everyone. Reality, statins may slightly raise blood sugar in some people, especially pre-diabetics or those with a risk of future diabetes like obese, family history of diabetes. But the absolute benefit in heart attack and stroke prevention is far greater. The risk of diabetes is one in 255 in those treated with statins while the reduction in cardiovascular events is 1 in 39. If I told you a pill slightly raised your sugar but cut your heart attack risk in half, would you still skip it? Most doctors wouldn't and neither should you. And you can reduce the risk of diabetes by maintaining an ideal body weight, eating right and exercising. Myth number three, statins are unnatural and harmful chemicals. Reality, statins were originally derived from a natural fungus, a penicillium species. They are amongst the most studied drugs in history, used in over 100 million people worldwide. Statins have been studied more than many vitamin supplements and yet, unlike most supplements, they actually save lives. I had a patient who stopped his statin therapy due to a WhatsApp forward advice. A year later, he had a minor heart attack. He's back on it now and so is his faith in science. Bottom line, statins don't harm your health, they protect it. Taking cholesterol medications is not a sign of weakness. It's like wearing a seat belt. You don't wear it because you're a bad driver. You wear it because life is unpredictable. See, cholesterol medications aren't like antibiotics. They don't give instant results. The real magic lies in the long term. Over time, statins reduce inflammation in arterial plaques, making them less likely to rupture. Also, consistent LDL reduction prevents further plaque buildup. And studies show that uh, patients on a long-term statin therapy have a 20 to 30% lower risk of heart attacks and strokes. It's like planting a tree for shade. You won't see the results overnight, but in the long run, it provides life-saving protection. Modern treatment isn't one size fits all. It's personalized, risk-oriented, and target-driven. So for those with moderate risk, we target LDL of less than 100 milligram percent. For those with high risk, we target LDL to less than 70 mg percent. And those with very high risk, we target LDL to less than 55 mg percent. The higher your risk, the more aggressive the treatment. And hitting these targets 
drastically reduces heart attack and stroke risk. We start with statins and adjust doses depending on the target we need to achieve. Others like azetimibe, bempedoic acid or the PCSK9 inhibitors may be added if targets are not achieved with statins or someone does not tolerate a statin. Now here's the truth. Medications work best when paired with lifestyle changes. Think of it as teamwork. You need both players to win the game. So eat smart and exercise regularly. We have discussed this at depth in our previous videos. And quit smoking. This amplifies the benefits of medications as smoking reduces HDL and increases the arterial damage. So think of this as a Bollywood blockbuster. You need a star cast, that's your medications, and a strong script, that is your lifestyle changes, for a hit. So medications for cholesterol aren't a shortcut. They are a long-term investment in your health. Combined with your lifestyle changes and regular follow-ups, they protect your heart and improve your quality of life. If this video helped you understand your options, share it with your loved ones. Don't forget to subscribe to EduCardioWise for more practical and relatable heart health tips. Let's take charge of cholesterol and our lives together. In our upcoming video, we will discuss about the role of supplements in reducing cholesterol. So stay tuned and goodbye.